Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Cleveland's fallen firefighters were honored with a memorial rededication ceremony. The restoration of the figures on the Cleveland Firefighters Memorial has been completed and installed. A crowd gathered together as a wreath was placed and the brave souls whose name adorned the plaque were remembered. Fire Chief Angelo Cavillo says he is pleased with the restoration work. It's the ultimate sacrifice of firefighters and officers in the Cleveland Division of Fire that uh, paid the ultimate and uh, we, we honor them today at this St. Patty's Day event. Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson reflected on the meaning of the memorial and the city's commitment to all those who work in public safety. So this memorial and the rededication of it is really a recommitting of the, of, uh, the city and, and, and the division of fire to uh, its members and those who have sacrificed in, in uh, the line of duty. City Council President Kevin Kelly wants people who visit the memorial to think about those who serve and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And hopefully everyone understands that this, this memorial is here just to represent and symbolize those that gave their lives, that we never forget their service, that we never forget those that every day get out of bed not knowing what risks they're going to face when they, when they, when they you know, come to their jobs each day. It's a different, it's a very special calling and we really owe a debt of gratitude to all of our first responders and especially those that have given their lives in the service to our city. If you've never seen the memorial, it's located right outside the Cleveland Browns Stadium. Well, the City of Cleveland's Women's History Month Committee honored two distinguished women in governance and law with a recent celebration. Dr. Betty Pinckney and Judge Jasmine Torres Lugo were given awards and proclamations in recognition of their significant contributions to our community. When I came here, I was determined to learn English. I was determined to practice uh, law. It's, a, it's in me. I know I am my purpose. I love what I do. I love what I do. And on top of that, God has given me the honor, the blessing to serve as a judge. And you know what's the beauty of it is that it wasn't easy either. I ran four times. And in my fourth time is when I won. But I don't see it as a defeat. Every time I learn something new as a woman, as a person, and spiritually. I've had a very good life. I have so many friends. It almost brings me to tears sometimes to think about all, all the wonderful things that have happened to me in my lifetime and are going to continue because I'm not getting ready to check out. <laughs> Judge Emanuela Groves of the Cleveland Municipal Court spoke about her friendship with the honorees. I am thrilled to be a part of a program that is honoring two of my very good friends, Dr. Betty Pinckney and Judge Jasmine Torres Lugo. Now when I say friends, they're not like the friends on Facebook. You know, people say they got friends, they're friends over friends over friends over friend. But Dr. Betty Pinckney and Judge Lugo are friends that I can readily call when they need advice, guidance, or even a laugh. I call them because of their care, wisdom, compassion, and discernment. And most importantly, because I trust them. Nine local entrepreneurs pitched their business ideas at the Neighborhood Transformation Initiative Retail Incubator Competition at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. <laughs> Mayor Frank Jackson explains the purpose of the incubator. The incubator is just a small part of an overall effort to rebuild a distressed neighborhood and to rebuild the economy of that neighborhood so that we can create wealth and, and do that by uh, providing uh, support to entrepreneurs who will provide goods and services to that neighborhood. So this is a real true partnership between the public and private sector to go into distressed areas of the city of Cleveland and rebuild those areas and do it in such a way that they can sustain themselves and not need perpetual subsidies in order to have the quality of life and the wealth that is needed to have a real sustainable neighborhood. For the entrepreneurs, this is helping not only the community, but their lifelong goals. 
there was a, a dearth of minorities. Um, our, we were being underrepresented as owners of coffee shops and manufacturers and end product developers. So what I wanted to do was to be able to take my product, bottle it, and also present myself as a business or as an example of um, a minority and a female that is on the business end of the coffee industry. So with the incubator space, and with all of the um, access to capital and training that you guys are providing to us, I feel like I actually have a shot at making my dream come true. So I believe that the capital funding I'll need to get started is about $15,000, of which I'm able to provide 30 to 35%, which will leave me with about needing about $10,000 to get LaMocha up and running, because I pretty much have everything I need. I just need a building I can sell out of a closet, to be honest with you, so I'm ready to go, y'all. <laughs> to see the NTI Retail Incubator Competition in its entirety and see which six of the nine businesses took the top prize, tune in to TV20 and our TV20 YouTube channel. The 2019 Cleveland Clinic Minority Men's Health Fair is coming up on April 11th. The health fair, which is open to all members of the public, is a chance for men to get free screenings for blood pressure, cholesterol, blood glucose, and more. Men will also have an opportunity to meet with a urologist for a one-on-one -on -one prostate education session, then have a free PSA or prostate-specific antigen screening. A lot of these conditions that I sp speak about, high blood pressure, diabetes, many cancers, uh, men can have, individuals can have and not have any signs or symptoms whatsoever. Right. And so that really underscores why these men really need to come in and take advantage of the screenings. You know, oftentimes men, especially men, they don't want to go in and, unless they're really hurting or in severe pain or agony. but. Uh, again, you know, you can have prostate cancer, you can have colorectal cancer, diabetes and all these conditions, kidney disease, and not even know that you have it. When I attended the Minority Men's Fair, I found out that I had, uh, and that I was diabetic. If you're not sure about attending the health fair, listen to the story of Cedric Richardson. He went on the urging of his friend, and what he learned changed his life. When I found out that I was diabetic and I really accepted the fact that I was diabetic, then I wanted to get on a path to, uh, to start healing and find out exactly uh, what procedures and types of you know, things that I should do. I found that not only attending a minority men's health clinic uh, gave me that opportunity to see that, but then it gave me a broader vision as to how I could uh, really change my lifestyle. The 2019 Cleveland Clinic Minority Men's Health Fair will be on Thursday, April 11th from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. To register for this event, go to clevelandclinic.org slash MMHF. The rotunda of Cleveland City Hall was turned into a kitchen to help people learn the benefits of cooking at home and eating healthier. Chef Tijuana Scott Williams, owner of Pearl Flower Catering, ran the cooking demo during one of Cleveland's Lunch and Learn seminars. Williams prepared a delicious and healthy blackened chicken rice bowl full of yummy veggies along with a vegan cilantro lime aioli. Chef Williams gave us the secret to cooking healthy. You want to cook food, minimal amounts of ingredients. When you turn over the, the bottle and you read the packaging, Less is best when it comes to the amount of ingredients in the product because that's less preservatives. That means the food is in its most natural state. If you're someone who likes to eat out a lot, Chef Williams says save your money. Fresh fruits and vegetables are relatively inexpensive. Um, and chicken is one of the least expensive proteins that you can buy and rice is really cheap. Um, so again, cost is cost effective. You know what you're putting into your body. Again, um, you can control the amount of seasoning. You can control um, the oils that are used. So it's always um, a better alternative, especially if you have young kids. To learn more about Chef Williams, visit her website, pearlflowercatering.com. We'll be right back with more TV20 News. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, 
Why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. For Clevelanders looking for a job, there are many resources out there, and one of them is in downtown Cleveland. TV20 reporter Dan Monroe has more. The place is called Ohio Means Jobs Cleveland Cuyahoga, and it's located off Carnegie Avenue. Amanda Collins, administrative officer for Ohio Means Jobs, explains their purpose. Ohio Means Jobs is a collaboration with the City of Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, the State of Ohio, and community partners, where we assist the business community along with the job seeking community with meeting their hiring needs and their employment needs. We assist with training opportunities as well. For those seeking training and jobs placement assistance, Collins wants you to make Ohio Means Jobs your first stop. We want to be known, and we are known, as the One Stop. Formerly, that was our originating name, the One Stop and we are still known as the one stop for Greater Cleveland Cuyahoga County. If you're looking to get back into the workforce or to take your job interviewing skills to the next level, then Ohio Means Jobs can help. Plus, it's easy to get connected, says Collins. They can visit us on our website, omjcc.us. We host a lot of our events through our website and give opportunities for individuals to register and to become a part of what we're doing here to advance their job search and training opportunities as well. The Ohio Means Jobs facility in downtown Cleveland welcomed the Orlando Baking Company's HR manager, Lee Herman, who spoke about what it's like working for the bread company to a room full of interested job seekers. Orlando Baking Company started in Italy, uh, still owned by the family. They, um, they moved into the United States in 1904, uh, decided this is the place to be in, in Cleveland and settled there. They've expanded so much um, that in 1979, they built the new facility on Grand Avenue, started about 100,000 square feet, and we're close to about 280,000 square feet now. Herman says if you're looking for an entry-level job and are looking for growth, Orlando would like to talk to you. It's a good example. It's a good way for you to come into the company, learn about the company, and there's potential for growth. We have our production manager that started as a sanitor, sweeping the dock, 25 years later, he's a production manager. So motivation is recognized, good hard work, good attendance, and you're going to go places in Orlando. While Lee was talking to the group, she laid out what it was like for new employees at the baking company. Number one is long hours. Um, it's a bakery, so sometimes the times are different and that, but when they come in, they'll meet their supervisor. The supervisor explained to him some of the duties and it's really a very little training process because it might be that you're feeding pans on a line or you're, feed, you're making sure that the bread is coming down through packaging straight and all that. So it's a very simple task, but again, it's fast pace and you got to keep up with the machines and that. And if you could do that, you have a long time with Orlando. Orlando is hiring now. Visit OrlandoBaking.com to see the positions available and to apply. As a part of its in-demand jobs week, the Ohio Means Jobs Facility in downtown Cleveland welcomed the Great Lakes Truck Driving School to talk to job seekers about the need for truck drivers of all kinds. Great Lakes has been around approximately 10 years and we specialize in training for commercial driving, heavy equipment operation, and the oil field certifications required to be in the drilling arena. Michael Neese, Great Lakes VP of Development, says the jobs are there waiting to be filled thanks to a strong economy and the retirement of the older workforce. We're seeing approximately a third of the job openings that are required to catch up on the uh, demand is due to industry growth. The other portion, which is just shy of about half of the job openings, is due to retirement. Needless to say, you get to a point where you retire, you've got to replace the driver in that seat. So now, right now, over the next 10 years, we're looking at a shortage of drivers of approximately 890,000 drivers nationwide. Long considered a male-dominated career, more and more women are joining into its ranks, which makes a truck driving career more appealing to Nadeja Shorter, who came to Ohio Means Jobs to learn more about new opportunities. Women have a lot to offer these days, and like you said, in a male-dominated field, like 
you, it'll be nice to see that a woman is interested in doing, you know, like construction, truck driving and stuff like that. It's very interesting. Antonio McMullen says he has truck driving in his blood, and once he gets his GED, he'll be heading right over to the Great Lakes Truck Driving School. A lot of these truck driving jobs has a lot of classes and that there's a bunch of opportunities that are open in the truck driving company and that it doesn't take a lot. All you need is your GD or diploma to start in that field. New classes are starting soon at the Great Lakes Truck Driving School. Visit their website at greatlakestds.com to learn more about this in-demand career field. The Ohio Means Jobs Facility in downtown Cleveland welcomes Southwest General Hospital's Employee Relations Specialist, Judy Berry, who spoke about what it's like working for the hospital to a room full of interested job seekers. Southwest is the friendliest hospital that you will find in the Cleveland area. It's community-based. A lot of our focus is around the community and our community involvement. Our patients are our families, our friends, our neighbors. Um, we know people that come in. We have longevity in our staff. We have, um, we just have a wonderful group of people. Barry says Southwest General Hospital currently has 70 openings available. Most of uh, the positions are clinically um, based. The nurses, the PCAs are, seem to be where our most openings are. But we always have opportunity in our nutrition services department, patient access, admin assistance. Um, our website updates daily. Every posting that becomes available is posted immediately. Job seeker Cynthia Michaeloff has 15 years of experience in the healthcare field and said she was excited to learn about the opportunities and work environment at Southwest General Hospital. I like the family uh, unit, uh, working in feeling warm and like a family. I like that first and foremost. I don't want to dread going to work. Judy says it's also important to know that there are plenty of jobs for people who do not have higher learning medical degrees. Our medical assistants, our admin support associates, our uh, pharmacy techs, our STNAs, our access reps do not require um, a higher level of degree, high school diploma. If they have uh, medical terminology in their background, that is most helpful. Uh, but no, not all require the higher level of education. If you're curious about the types of jobs available at Southwest General Hospital, visit their website at swgeneral.com. To wrap up In Demand Jobs Week, Ohio Means Jobs hosted their second annual Job Match Day at Tri-C's Manufacturing Technology Center on Woodland Avenue. Job seekers had a chance to learn about opportunities available to them by speaking to a representative at any of the 50 companies and organizations on hand. At Ohio Means Jobs Cleveland Cuyahoga County, we have a collaboration of the City of Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, the State of Ohio, and our community partners. And Tri-C is one of our community partners. They've been a very strong partner with us, and we appreciate the partnership we have with training opportunities, employment opportunities, and of course with them opening up their doors for a venue like this. And our Job Match Day is when we're bringing a lot of our job-seeking community here to Cuyahoga Community College to meet with over 50 employers in regards to job opportunities that their companies offer. So what we've done, we've done some research in regards to opportunity occupations, and we've invited those employers with those in-demand jobs to say, this is where you can make your connection. Amanda tells us what the biggest barrier job seekers have when searching. We don't look at it as a stumbling block. We look at it as being very competitive because you do have the young professionals that are graduating for college, from college and they're taking part in opportunities like this. So with our mature workers, it's a competitive field in regards to who are they going to hire first. And we don't want these individuals to think that they're unemployable because they're not. They have more skills and more experience that they ever thought they had. And that, believe it or not, is what a lot of employers are looking for, the experience. And you're willing to be trained, and these individuals have been in the workforce for a long time, so they're just ready to transfer those skills that they already have. Returning to the workforce after a seven-year hiatus, Carlton Story understands the difficulties getting back in the job market. My particular area is in IT. Um, I was in IT for about 25 years. I took about seven years off, and I'm trying to get back into the field. 
Uh, one of the things is uh, I was looking for an entry position, so some of my stuff is not as current as I should be. So I'm trying to get recertified in some things uh, to bring my skills back up to speed. Robert Matthews of Mr. Appliance tells us what his first experience at the job match has been. I'm very impressed with the amount of people that they have here and that uh, variety as well of not only candidates but as companies. We are constantly looking for appliance technicians. The appliance repair business has drastically taken off over the last eight to ten years due to appliances becoming more the center of homes. So we are constantly looking. This field is probably one of the weakest fields for technical people to get. The Museum of Contemporary Art at the corner of Euclid and Mayfield is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. TV20 special correspondent Errol Porter was on hand for the big celebration, which included some even bigger announcements. Beginning today, March 16, 2019, MoCA Cleveland is free and open to all. Up till now, we've had free days once a month, and on those days, we would see three to four times the number of people coming. So we knew that there was a desire and a need uh, that corresponded with lowering the economic barrier. And now we, we, we hope, and we'll see if we're doing our job well. It's, it's not enough to just lower the economic barrier. We have to also make people feel welcomed, and that's what a lot of the other initiatives are designed for. What do you think about the museum going free? I absolutely love the fact that the museum is going free, mm -hmm. which gives a lot of people in the neighborhood the opportunity to come and explore and enjoy themselves and just have fun. All right. Such a great thing. I can't wait. I know it's free, so it's gonna, they're going to see me like every just weekend. Come on and, in and, and you know? enjoy yourself <laughs> and just, hey, we're here to help. Absolutely. We're here to support, and but, we're here to just give you the experience that you've never had before. So free is just one of the initiatives that we're thinking about. We're trying to build a program that's based on inclusion, that's based on intersections of people, that's based on empathy. Something I'm really interested in is how can we look, use art as a conductor to talk about different things that are affecting our community, that are at the world at large, and how can we have a space where we come together, hear each other, actively listen, get to talk about things that are important to us. Art should not be the exclusive uh, domain of any one group or any, any group of people. And art isn't one thing. And so what MOCA does is Mar MOCA doesn't tell people what they're supposed to like. We give them the opportunity to have experiences. The experiences are not all visual. Sometimes they're auditory. Sometimes they're just being together. Tell us about when you got started and what's so great about the Museum of Contemporary Art? Um, well, I've been, I would say I'm a third generation artist, at least to my knowledge in terms of my family. Um, but most recently, um, Cleveland has been, a, um, was introduced to my work through the Front Triennial with the exhibition, A Color Removed at Spaces. Okay. Um, but I've known about the Muse Museum of Contemporary Art for many years, and this is exciting. For my nephew in particular, he's a little nervous, but he loves the design of this building. And so we live in the neighborhood, and whenever we drive past, he always says, I want to come in this building. Right. And so when this event happened about celebrating increasing accessibility and making it free to the community, our family got very excited. I am very, very honored and happy to show my work at Cleveland MoCom. This is my second time doing a large show here. The first time was 20 years ago. So I am truly honored to be back. Okay, everyone, there you have it. My time is up here at the Museum of Contemporary Art here in the city of Cleveland. And get on down here. Remember, it's absolutely free. So we need to see you down here. My name is Errol Porter reporting for the city of Cleveland, TV20. We are Cleveland. The Cleveland Botanical Gardens are all a flutter for spring with their new exhibit, Amazing Butterflies.
Director of Exhibits and Experiences for the Gardens, Peg Weir, lets us in on what we can expect from the interactive displays. The first fun thing you'll see is a long caterpillar tunnel that kids seem to really enjoy running back and forth, but you'll see it as soon as you come in the front doors. There's over two dozen actual activities. Most of them are ADA accessible. I think there's only five that are not. So again, families, a lot of people can go in and, and enjoy the activities together. Some of the activities include a beanbag throw, um, there's a caterpillar walk, there's a, a short monorail for the kids. But the point is that um, families get to learn about what it's like to be a caterpillar changing to a butterfly. So you go through the caterpillar stage, through the pupa stage, we have little pupas, they can climb in and take pictures, and then they come out as butterflies. But during that experience, we also talk about what they eat, um, things that will prey on them, and they have to learn how to escape that, and then finally in the end, come out a beautiful butterfly. And when you come into the ticketing area, um, our guests will receive this garden game card. And this is to be used uh, at eight different stations as you're going through the maze. As you complete an activity, you get to stamp it. You're going to want to capture all the fun, and the team at Botanical Gardens has you covered with their selfie stations. We have one selfie. It's large butterfly wings, an adult size and a child size. So we hope people take advantage of standing in front of those to get pictures. And then upstairs on the second level by our other family activities in the Kid Nook, we have a selfie station. So there we have a meadow background and some butterfly wing props and antennas and other fun things so people can dress up and take selfie photos. When you walk into the Costa Rica glass house, you'll observe more butterflies than usual. During this five week exhibit, we are doubling the amount of butterflies we have coming in and doubling the amount of releases. So we will have a release every day at 11 a.m. except Sunday because we don't open till 12. But then also um, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So folks here in the morning get to see it and folks in the afternoon get to see it. Amazing Butterflies is on display until April 23rd. Check out cbgarden.org for more information. Come have fun, and remember, it's not just about the indoor activity. We're hoping Mother Nature cooperates, and you get to go outside and see our 10 acres of gardens as well. Uh, last fall, our horticulturists planted a number of bulbs, so we should have lots of flowers coming up in the near future. Amazing Butterflies is a lot of fun and really beautiful, and as you can see, I had a great time checking it out. Well, that's all for your TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next, we're going to have Christian Patterson with your Inside Sports Report.